Well, welcome back, Cornerstone Kids. I am so glad that you're back with us today, and I hope you had a good week, and I'm sure you are looking forward to finishing up school. I know we're finishing up soon in the next few weeks, and um, being able to get out of the house a little bit more than usual, so that's fun for all of us, and I... I just hope that you are not forgetting about Jesus when we are kind of having a different kind of life and we're staying home and we're not going to school and we're not seeing our friends as much and our family as much. And I hope that while you're doing all of this, that you are still remembering Jesus. and. Just being, just watching this video to learn something new tells me that you are still thinking about him and that makes him so happy. So I'm glad you're here for that reason too because I miss you and because it makes Jesus so happy that you're still thinking of him. And so um, today we are in Ephesians again and we have a couple more weeks. I think this is week five or six, I didn't check. Um, but we have nine weeks, just like your mom and dad have nine weeks um, with the adult service. And so if you remember, Ephesians was written by Paul and Paul was in prison. Okay, so everything we read him read about him and what he's written to us. Just keep that in your mind. He was in prison when he wrote these words on the paper. So today um, we are going to be in Ephesians 5, but before we go to that place in our Bible, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about who is your role model? Who do you think about? You're like, oh, I would like to be like them. I really like the way they act, the way they talk, the way they do things. I want to be like them. It could be someone famous, it could be a movie star, it could be someone that is in your family. You like you really want to be just like your dad, or you really want to be like your mom or your grandpa or your uncle. Okay, and so when you think about those um, people. I have a, a couple um, examples, okay? So the first example is somebody that is not real, okay? But you might recognize Spider-Man. And you might have thought when you see this character, like, gosh, I wish I was like him. I wish I was strong like him. I wish I would get be able to help out in difficult situations. There might be things about him that you think, oh, I would like to be like that. It could be um, a real person, um, like, uh, like a fireman. You might be this um, firefighter here in the picture. You might be thinking, I would love to be a firefighter because then I could help people, I could put out fires, I would work hard, all of those qualities, okay? I also um, included a picture of a police officer, and much in the same way you might be thinking, I, these guys or girls are my role models because I want to be helpful like they are. I want to save people who are in danger. I want to do that. There, there might be some famous people that you were thinking of. I have a few. Um, I have a couple um, athletes here that you might recognize. Um, you might think, I wish that I could be like these athletes, okay? That they, everybody, the crowd goes wild when they walk out. Everybody really likes the way that they play their sport and they make a lot of money. They're famous when they walk into some place. Everybody's like, whoa, they're coming in here, okay? so. Um, I, a couple um, famous people. You might be fans of these descendant characters, okay? You might be thinking, oh, I wish that I was like her. Maybe I look like her. Oh, I wish I had the power that she has. I wish people liked me like her. You might be thinking of a singer that you think, oh, I wish I could sing like that, 
okay? Now, all these people could be your role models for different reasons. They might, you might want to act like them. You might want to have the same talent as them. You might want to have the same job as them. All of those things are reasons we look up to people that we want to be like, we want for a role model. But I'm sure you know, but these, none of these people are perfect, right? They all make mistakes in their life and they all have things in their life that you and I don't want to be like because they're not perfect. And there's only one person that's really perfect that we really want to be like 100% completely. Now, all these people have kind of like pieces, right? Pieces of them that we would like to be like, but only Jesus is perfect for our role model. Only he is the person that we should be want to be like 100%. And that's exactly what Paul's saying in Ephesians um, today, the, the section that we're on today. And it's Ephesians 5. So if you remember, Ephesians is very close to the end of your Bible. So see if you can find Ephesians in your Bible. And I'm going to find it in mine. It is... You can see in my Bible that there's just a little bit more left, okay? So when you're looking in your Bible, just make sure that you're towards the back of your Bible. And the book is Ephesians. And we are at the big five, chapter five. Okay, get to Ephesians five in your Bible. And if you're looking for a good role model, a perfect role model, this is the place you're gonna find it, okay? The only place. Now, if you go to the Big Five, Chapter Five, in your Bible, we are going to be right there at verse one. Okay, the little one. And I'm going to read just the little one and the little two, verse one and verse two. It says, You are the children that God dearly loves, so be just like Him. It's pretty simple language. You are the person that Jesus loves. No matter, no matter what, no matter how perfect you are, imperfect you are, if you're mean or nice, okay, if you had a really good week or you had a really terrible week, you are the person that Jesus loves. And because of that, be, be just like him. This is the verse one of Ephesians. Now, verse two says, Lead a life of love just as Christ did. He loved us. He gave himself up for us. He was a sweet smelling offering and sacrifice to God. And they're talking about how he died on the cross for you and for me so that we could go to heaven. He gave himself up for you and me and loved us. And so we are supposed to be just like him. We are supposed to give ourselves up for other people, okay? And that, Paul's telling the people in Ephesus, the Ephesians, that they should be just like Jesus. And I'm sure they had people, just like we do, that we really like, that we might look up to, that we want to be like, but none of them were perfect like Jesus is in every way. He wants us to be like Jesus. And that's why I wrote this verse up here um, for us today. It says, verse one, you are the children that God dearly loves. So be just like him, Ephesians five, verse one. And um, there's, a, we said that he was loving. And I want you to think of some other characteristics that Jesus has that you want to be just like, okay? We thought about some of these, um, some of these guys. Like, if we think about this uh, baseball player, there you might want to have his skills to play basketball, okay? You might want to be kind like he is. I think he's pretty kind. I don't know a lot about him, but I know a lot of people look up to him, and he's their role model because he treats. He's a good team player. He treats the people on his team kindly, okay? 
He is respectful of his coach and does what his coach asks him to do. And so for all of these reasons, you might be saying, hey, this guy, this baseball player guy, I look up to him. He's a role model. Now, in the same way, think about Jesus. What does he do or how does he act that you might look up to? And we said that he was loving, okay? So he died on the cross. He gave up his life for me and for you. And so we know that he was loving. And some other things that you might think about um, Jesus, he is very patient. He's patient with you and me. He forgives us. No matter how many times we do the wrong thing, he forgives us. He's patient and he waits. He doesn't say, ah, I'm done with you. If you want to keep doing the wrong thing, the ah, go ahead. He's patient. He waits for you and me to start doing the right thing. And he forgives us immediately. Okay, so he's patient. He's forgiving. He's loving. Okay, he, when he was here on earth, he obeyed his father 100%. He did exactly what God told him to do. He was obedient. He was respectful. Now, do you think Jesus ever lies? No way. He is truthful all the time. All of his words in here are truthful. When he was on earth and he spoke 100% truth. Okay, so that's another quality of him that you and me look, look up to. He was truthful. So he's loving, he's patient, he's truthful. He is forgiving all of those things are what make Jesus our role model 100%. So this week, I want you to think about which, which of those things you can improve on. You can be more like Jesus. Now, can we be 100% of a role model like Jesus? Not 100%. We can never be 100% perfect. But you and me can definitely every day try to be just like him okay think about what he would do think about how he would treat your little sister that was annoying think about what he would do if your mom told you to turn off your tablet and you had only been playing for 10 minutes and it wasn't fair because your brother got 20 minutes and why do i have to turn it off now think about what jesus how jesus would respond with patience, with kindness, with obedience, with respect, with love, okay? So when, when you think about those hard situations that you are going to have this week, because we all have them every week, think about how you can respond just like Jesus, okay? And we're going to pray, and then um, I, there's a craft that um, hopefully this week will remind you of this lesson. So when you, if you start to forget what I said today, when you were listening, you'll see your craft and you'll think, oh, that's right. I need to be just like him, just like Jesus. So let's fold our hands so not playing with anything and close your eyes so no one distracts you. Jesus, thank you for these kids that have come today that even with their schedules all messed up and their time with friends and with sports and with school all messed up, they still are making time to learn something new about you. Thank you for that, Jesus. And I pray that you would just help them this week to become more like you, that you would help us when our natural part wants to be impatient or unkind. You would help us to be patient and kind so we could become more like you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are a perfect role model. You are a perfect example of what we should be. And I thank you that we always know where what you are. We always know that you are truth. We always know that you are loving. When other people fail, you don't fail, Jesus. When other people lie to us, you don't lie. When other people are, are um, not loving, you are always loving. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you for these kids. Bless this week in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, the thing that I was um, thinking for this week, okay, 
um, we, I put um, today's verse on a piece of blue paper, if you have it. If you have white paper, you can always color it blue. It's supposed to be like the ocean, okay? And on each of these fish, I put a quality of Jesus. So I put today's verse on the top. You are the children that God dearly loves, so be just like him. That's Ephesians 5 verse 1. And I put one, two, three, four, five fish on mine with five characteristics of God. Like one says truthful, one says tender hearted, one says loving, kind, patient. So those are all examples of what you can put on your fish. Now, you can either, I'm going to show you how to make these cool origami fish, but they are a little tricky. So if you want a challenge, you can um, watch the origami fish and make some of your own. If you don't want a challenge, <laughs> then draw your fish or color your fish or just cut your fish out of construction paper. Natalie even had another idea. She made an octopus. It would also work as a jellyfish, I think. Um, and on each of the legs, she put a quality of God. So she added um, kind, giving, patient, nice. She did her, she did eight qualities on the bottom of her octopus. Um, so these are two examples of ways that you can, number one, start thinking about when you're gonna go back to the beach. Number two, remember the qualities of God. Okay, now let me show you how to make these origami fish if you want to. And um, you need a square piece of paper. Now I would use a square piece that was um, a little smaller than this, but I did it big so you can see it. Um, like maybe you want to take, see this blue paper here, maybe you want to take a square that's more like this size but I wanted you to be able to see it clearly, so I got a bigger piece, okay? But it needs to be a square to make the origami fish. Now, you're going to fold it in a triangle that way, and also a triangle, then open it, then fold it in a triangle the other way. So I'll give you a second to do that. So you're gonna fold it in a triangle that goes this way, open it up, Fold it in a triangle that goes that way, so it so it's like divided in four different sections. Okay. Now the second step is you're going to fold it um, in a rectangle, fold it in half, going this way, the rectangle shape, and then you'll do it again going the other direction. So open it up and fold it again in a rectangle that goes this direction. Okay. So when you open it, you have one, two, three, four, you have eight, eight sections, okay? So you did two, you did a triangle, and then a triangle, you did a rectangle, going that way, then a rectangle going that way. Okay, now this is the only, this is the most tricky part, I think, of, um, of this, but you're gonna take, um, take your paper now, that it's like a um, triangle, and you're going to um, take this crease right here and fold it down inside so that it goes like this. Let me, I'll show it to you again. So you have a rectangle. You're gonna take this crease on this side and push it down, okay? So you'll push it down in there. And once you do that, once you have it pushed down in there, pull these two sides to sort of make one side of a triangle. Do you see that? And we'll do the same um, to this side. So push this crease over here, push it down. In and pull these two flaps together to make the triangle. Okay, so this is actually like the body of your fish and the only thing we have left to do is to make the tail. Now, you're gonna take only one of these flaps and fold it down 
to the line right there. So take the big flap, fold it down to the line right there, and crease it, okay? That's the first part of the fish's tail. So I took it, folded that part down, and then I'm going to fold the bottom up. Now this piece is going to fold it up to the edge of the other one. Fold it up to the edge of the other one. Okay, I'll show you one more time. So you take this flap up and it should overlap right next to the other one, okay? And that makes the fish's tail. You'll see sort of like that fish-shaped tail. And then when you turn it around, you'll see this is the final product. And as you can, and then you can put an eye on it or scales or whatever. As you can see, mine is, this one is a little too big. Um, if you want to make one big one and write the characteristics of God on it, that's great too. Um, but you can see um, on mine that I did a few smaller fish. So that's your choice. But here is the origami fish and... Um, here is a bunch of small ones to remind you and me that we want to be just like him. And these characteristics that we wrote here and that we thought about today are the ones we want to copy. Okay, so I hope that you remember that this week, especially when hard things happen. Okay, when treat people treat us badly, or when we're feeling sad, or when we're frustrated, or when things aren't going right, that's when we need to think about, okay, how can I be just like Jesus right now in this hard spot? Okay, so think about that this week, and I will see you again soon, probably next week. <laughs> Goodbye, Quarterstone Kids.